so valuation is in simple terms nothing but finding economic value of a unit or an entity as a whole and honestly speaking that time i had no idea uh, about what it was and uh, through the process i i learned a lot and i i evolved in this field and learned that you know okay this is something that i want to do in my life how is the field of valuation evolving with technology earlier you said that you are now involved in the tech part so because you know we wanted you to share your experience on that front uh, i thought it's it's great to uh, put it up uh, in front of you mr ashwath damodaran of course is is considered like the god of valuation so even if you are not from a tech background please do not refrain from entering into this tech space because as difficult as it sounds artificial intelligence is the future right and uh, you don't want to be left behind Hey everyone hope all of you are having a pleasant weekend my name is Divya Daga and I'm a CA working in the financial services industry um i'm hosting today's industry connect session organized by seek mentor an online platform that aims to make quality mentorship more accessible and personalized um if you're new to seek mentor we are a career mentorship platform with more than 120 experts from diverse industries uh we have till date helped over 5000 students through our mentorship program and initiatives collaborating with more than 40 institutions so if you're interested you should definitely go and book a one on one session with your preferred mentor today and if you're interested to know more about seek a mentor please do check out the links below um okay so you know everyone is talking about shark tank india a lot these days and it's like you know it's made investing a dinner table conversation um it also showed us how valuation plays an important role in fundraising process this is just one aspect of valuation and more so in recent times um you know it's very talked about because of the startup landscape and the liquidity in the market um but have you ever wondered what other types of valuations exist and you know how does a career in valuation as a valuation analyst look like so today to address all of our curious questions we have shitish patel joining us and uh, shitish is a ca by profession and is also amongst the few people pursuing the chartered business valuator program from york university she is currently the associate vice president at 73 strings and has earlier worked with duffin phelps and kpmg in valuation services so first of all i welcome shitish it is a pleasure to have you and thanks for helping us understand valuation uh, uh, career and valuation thanks divya for all these kind words of yours and uh, like i'm i'm really gratitudinal to you for giving me this opportunity of sharing a few anecdotes that i may have uh, so thank you um, you've already covered a lot about me but just a few things that i may want to highlight so i started my career um, i think 7 8 years back when i got recruited on campus drive of the icwa institute so uh, uh, that was at kpmg and i joined in their management consulting team uh, to realize in about 6 months of time that you know this is not what i want to do and after completing ca like there was a natural progression and in that times a valuation was like a field which was look upon and you know everyone was like okay very nice ye yeah. and honestly speaking that time i had no idea uh, about what it was and uh, through the process i i learned a lot and i i evolved in this field and learned that you know okay this is something that i want to do in my life um apart from my professional career at kpmg in valuations and then for a very long time at duffin phelps uh, i have now worked started working in 73 strings i will talk more about that later but uh, i myself over these years have seen valuation evolve uh, not as a field but also as a concept an intellectual concept people are talking about it there is like a lot of deliberation happening there are tons of round tables that happen so it's 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 very interesting and uh, yeah i am loving it personally and apart from my work life i i spend a lot of time cooking and uh, i i i like do, i like doing that and in my free time i usually like paint or read or things like that so that's that's a little about me awesome awesome so for anyone who would like to know more about shitij or connect with her please find her linkedin profile in the description box and feel free to ping her 
Um, so let's get started with the questions because I myself have a lot of questions on this field. Uh, but I'll, I'll of course start with the basic one, which is what is valuation and what are its sub segments. Sure. So uh, valuation in colloquial terms is basically finding an economic value of any unit. Now this unit can be a business altogether. It can be um, it can be a part of the business or any a uh, certain aspect of a business like even brand so if you are valuing say coca cola you can value coca cola as a company you can value the tangible assets of coca cola in parts you can value certain business units or business segments of coca cola you can also value the brand of coca cola so every so valuation is in simple terms nothing but finding economic value of a unit or an entity as a whole now i would like to split the sub segments of valuation uh, into two categories so one is segmentation by the nature so like i mentioned you can do um, business valuation intangible as assets valuation real estate valuation startup valuation complex securities valuation like financial instruments so on and so forth the other segment would be valuation uh, based on the purpose for which you are valuing because that's a very critical aspect in real life terms what is the reason why you are doing a valuation so it can be either for um, uh, you know internal decision making it can be for uh, regulatory requirements legal regulatory requirements it can be for mergers and acquisitions so uh, these are the reasons why you could value so that's how i would like to sub categorize valuations in by nature and by uh, purpose got it um so for our discussion let's uh, you know focus on valuation of companies so uh, you know help us understand the components and methods of such valuation sure so um uh, we'll we'll stick to the basics like you said a business valuation now for valuing a business the three most common methods of valuation is uh, uh, income approach market approach and cost approach i will not get into uh, depth of you know complex securities or you know startups and all but these are the three primary approaches used to value any business now we will we'll take this using an example of hospitals like because in these unfortunate times like hospitals are being talked about a lot right so i'll try to explain these three approaches using an example of hospitals so in income approach what you would do is uh, you would present value all the future cash flows of the business to arrive at the value of the business today so that is what income approach does now to value a hospital using income approach you would essentially have to uh, model out the uh future cash flows of that hospital so you will have to consider all the revenue streams all the cost aspects all the future capex the whole debt structure etc etc and you will present value all those future cash flows to arrive at an expected value of that hospital today now in market approach it's basically finding a comparable value of your hospital so let's say just just for hypothetical example sake you are valuing apollo hospitals okay so what you would do is you would first go ahead and find out the peer set or the comparable companies for apollo hospital so you may pick certain listed companies in india like say fortis or max healthcare or you know narayan rudayale astadium you'll you'll pick basically all the uh, public hospital publicly listed hospitals you will find out their multiples so this can be ev by ev is essentially enterprise value divided by ebitda is a multiple ev by revenue is a multiple ev by ebitda is a multiple the relevance of each of these multiples depends on the industry that you are dealing with so you will find mu uh, multiples of the comparable companies and then you will try to use your metric basically apollo's revenue apollo's ebitda apollo's ebit whatever multiple the base and you will try to ascertain the enterprise value of apollo so this will be like a market approach where you are saying that i am pegging my value to my competitors assuming that 
my multiple and their multiple would be in a similar ballpark range. Now, in this case, it's very normal amongst valuation practitioners to apply a discount or a premium, which are all qualitative aspects, which I will cover like uh, going ahead in the uh, conversation. The other part of market approach is comparable transactions method. Now, you do the same analysis, but you do that not just with the competitive uh, not just with the peer set, but you take into consideration all the transactions that have happened in the recent past in this industry, in your geography. And then again, you arrive at the multiples and to the valuation. The third method is the cost approach. Now, this is not a very common method used in ongoing businesses because um, Largely, in my experience, what I've seen is that cost approach is used in situations where, you know, either you can't ascertain future cash flows or you are not making money right now or you are um, liquidating. So cost approach is nothing but a replaceable value. So there are different, different values you can arrive at using the cost approach like you know <clears throat> it's it's it, it it's basically the law of substitution so you know you'll do a liquidation value or a net realizable value or you know certain opportunity cost analysis so in hospitals you may arrive at a liquidation value by breaking down the entire hospital business into you know land building uh, equipments etc cetera, etc cetera, and intangible assets and that will be uh, the value of the hospital so right. this is like an overall uh, view of the basic business valuation. Understood. Fair enough. And is, is the valuation governed by any entity? I mean, like, are there any standards that need to be followed? Yeah, so a lot of valuation standards are now evolving. There is a lot of discussion happening around, but the most popular valuation standards are the international valuation the, the standards council so it's it's called ivsc so they have come out with like a lot of guidelines or frameworks for valuation so they they, they talk about the scope of work they talk about intangible assets they talk about you know uh, non financial liabilities plant and machinery so every component of valuation there is like a guideline or a standard expected set of procedures which a valuator should keep in line while performing evaluation. Similarly, even the in India, even ICAI has uh, the, the Chartered Accountants Institute is coming out with like a lot of guidelines and standards which one can refer to for the Indian context. And uh, there's also IPEV, which is uh, basically dealing with uh, valuation guidelines for private equity sector. So uh, these are the three bodies that at least uh, or the guidelines that at least I refer to personally whenever I am in doubt or I want some guideline or framework. Got it. Interesting. Um, also, uh, what are the kinds of analysis you do in a valuation assignment? Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take you through the whole valuation engagement procedure so that maybe uh, you know our viewers can understand what would their day-to-day -day work be like if if they pursue the valuation field. So. The very first step is defining the scope. So like I mentioned, you need to see what is the nature of valuation you're doing and what is the purpose, right? So if, if you were valuing something for an internal decision-making purpose, there would be certain different assumptions or certain different practices you may uh, use as compared to if you were doing the valuation for uh, uh, reporting purposes or for, you know, uh, legal uh, purposes or regulatory purposes. So concept remains same, but there would be certain risk factors involved, certain, you know, requirements involved, etc. So first is scope definition. Along with defining the scope, there are non-disclosure agreements. Then there is, you know, setting up a very uh, safe, secure IT framework because, you know, here you're dealing with a lot of sensitive data, which if goes out in public, uh, it can be a problem both for the company as well as the valuator. So first is doing all the hygiene checks, defining the scope, doing all the uh, requirements, etc. Second step would be doing qualitative analysis. So by qualitative analysis, I mean, there would be like a lot of primary and secondary research that one may have to uh, perform. Now, again, going back to the hospital scenario, 
you would want to see how is the macroeconomic scenario of the country what is the future of hospitals in india are there any um, government incentives being provided you know what is the occupancy per bed going around these days how much is capex being spent on adding a new hospital bed things like that so you get like a lot of information not just on the net but you know uh, one can even refer to annual reports of competitors things like that so that is the qualitative analysis which will help you not just understand the industry better but it will help you through the valuation process also because you'll know the key kpis to look at the third thing would then be quantitative analysis so quantitative analysis will be the basic business modeling right the valuation model the 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 proper excel structure that you build for the valuation so that will that will that will involve like business modeling uh, valuation modeling uh, certain uh, discount rate calculations etc etc so that will be the whole quantitative aspect of it now the fourth and the most important step according to me in this whole process is checking reasonableness so uh, like valuation is very judgment oriented right so how will you ascertain that 100 is the correct value for this business and it's not 1000 or it's not 20 right you can't deviate significantly right so checking reasonableness becomes very critical uh, according to me so uh, there is like a lot of uh, there's like there are lot of methods to do this industry uh, this reasonable checking you could do certain sensitivity analysis you could also do certain uh, analysis of industry specific multiples now in our hospital scenario there is like a very common multiple called uh, enterprise value per bed okay so if your hospital is a 1000 bed hospital versus if you have a competitor who is just a 50 bed hospital your value might not be in the same range okay but it will always be very rational and practical for you to check what is their enterprise value per bed versus what is our enterprise value per bed and it can't be significantly different so uh, industry specific multiples are one method then you can also check how has the value evolved over a period so you know that there are valuation value evolution or value creation uh, method so certain qualitative analysis around that so this is the fourth uh, step and the last step would be documentation so documentation would be mainly around you know preparing reports draft reports having discussions with clients again you know fine tuning the reports to certain extent if required doing uh, co- uh, completing the final reports having certain management representations etc so that's like the whole cycle of like a broad overview of the whole valuation cycle and how yeah, an analyst can be very exhaustive <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, cool and uh, so what are the kind of projects that you deal in and generally how long are the timelines for those okay so i'll just split this into two again first is based on my consulting experience that i had with uh, kpmg and duffen phelps um, i must have worked on over 100 valuation projects and every project was one of its kind so there were projects on uh, normal business valuations there were intangible asset valuations there were uh there were a, there were a lot of liquidation valuations because of the insolvency and bankruptcy code which came into play in uh the year 2016 yeah 2016 so um every project is different you can't really assert on a timeline because there are some projects which happen far quicker as compared to others which go on for like uh, months together so uh, consulting experience was both challenging and exciting uh, challenging because every project is different but exciting because you learn a lot about different industries also so how a hospital industry operates versus how a media house operates versus how a cement business will operate you would while valuing uh, companies or assets across different industries because you do the qualitative analysis you learn a lot about every industry so that's why i found that experience uh, like it, it helped me even enhance my business acumen right uh, so that was about my consulting experience 
now i have moved uh, like i have pivoted into a more of a tech role so what i am doing is in my current role we are building a software which would automate all these valuation processes so that's a completely new arena for me but again it's 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 extremely enthralling because uh, you have to set up a platform or you are building a platform which will automate a lot of these valuation processes so all that i have learned over these last 7 8 years in my consulting experience i'm putting all of that to use here and building a software so i'll maybe talk about it a little more later uh, yeah. but this is this is how uh, it is got it got it um so you know recently i've come across this gentleman called mr ashwath damodaran you know his his videos on valuations are pretty famous and he's actually you know by the way an expert or a super expert i as i may say in corporate valuation he is mm-hmm. actually on one of the videos he's spoken about how valuation is derived uh, from the story that you tell right i mean like you change your story the valuation will change so um, you know just let's address the elephant in the room which is is valuation as it's said really an art more than science okay that's a good question so yeah uh, ashwatha mr ashwatha madhuran of course is is considered like the god of valuations because he his videos are very very insightful and it, like he's he's his thought process is very different so everyone who wants to understand valuations from base would should in fact go through his videos maybe by his books like you will you will understand a lot of what he wants to convey on valuation uh, as far as your question on whether it's more of an art than a science i personally feel it's it's a combination of both uh, why art because of course like it's the story that you want to build and there is also like a lot of judgment based uh, assumptions that you make so if i am a valuator i may think that you know this much discount is sufficient for this particular company on the other hand you may think that no you know this is not enough i want to give a more discount or a more premium so it's there are a lot of judgment based calls and nobody is wrong and nobody is right so uh, you may have 10 different uh, rationales or reasons to justify your value and i may have the same so that's why circling back to that point of reasonableness of valuation that i mentioned in the earlier question that becomes very critical here because i don't want to justify my value by just giving some absurd story right so that's why it's an art and i think it is a science as well because what the procedures that we follow or the math that you do behind a valuation the calculation the quantitative aspect is method driven like you you can't just do anything under the sun right so it's it's i think it's it's like a balance between art and science both hmm true true um okay let's let's also discuss about you know if somebody wants to now enter uh, into valuation as a career what qualifications uh, does one need and also is it like a non ca can also pursue a career in valuation uh talking from my personal background uh, across all these three companies that i have worked with i have come across people from varied backgrounds to be very honest so uh cas cfas uh, you know mbas uh, engineers like like a lot of engineers in fact uh, in fact i even came across people from economics or you know political studies background so so i don't think it's confined to just finance people i think anybody can uh, opt for valuations because Uh, there is like a equal balance between qualitative and quantitative in valuation right so uh, one with an engineering background also will succeed immensely and i i know of people who 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 are doing very well in valuations in spite of not being cs so yeah i mean it's not confined to any particular uh, okay and i mean like any certifications required to be i mean like any certifications that you think are required um for this particular career 
see i think that depends on your prospective employer right i mean if if they require you to have like basic knowledge of valuation you may want to go ahead and pursue some sort short certifications to help you understand what valuation is in a lot of curriculums basics of valuation is covered like you know in ca cfa you 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 understand basic methodologies at least theoretically but if you are from a completely different background and have no knowledge on valuations it will it will be handy to do like a certification there are tons of certifications available both online and offline so you can take like a call and and if you want like if your viewers want to understand a little more on valuations i am happy to help so like they can just ping me on linkedin and i'll i'll try to guide them more. Great, great. Um, okay, and uh, what are some uh, tips that professionals should keep in mind uh, while preparing for an interview for a valuation analyst role? See, uh, like I have also taken a lot of interviews in my career, right? What I look for, or rather, most of the interviewers look for, are analytical and rationalizing skills. so that is something which you have to be very uh, careful about you are going to be tested on your analytical and rationalizing skills so don't be surprised if there are case studies thrown at you uh, you may not be expected to know every formula to the t but every interviewer is going to look for have you approached a certain um, calculation or you know have you kind of decoded the whole case so that is the first thing they might also test you on your general business acumen so uh, they may ask you for your opinion on any recent deal that has happened in the world so they might they might ask you for your opinion on that so so be well aware of current affairs especially in the mna space uh goes without saying they might ask you they will ask you uh, basics on valuation approaches methodologies certain financial ratios etc your excel skills need to be good i mean uh, they will not because because there's a modeling like a business modeling uh, involved financial modeling involved you need to have decent excel skills uh, complemented with uh, word and powerpoint skills also because the reports go out in word and powerpoint largely to sum it up i think if you are good analytically and rationally it should be good uh, you you'll be good <clears throat> critical thinking might also get tested so so be prepared for that and like to be honest uh, one should not be as nervous when they are going for an entry level uh, job because pretty much everything you're going to learn on the job like you're going to acquire a lot of understanding and knowledge about valuation about this field uh, as you progress in your career in this field great great that was a great uh, advice that you've given um okay and i think the last question and the most interesting one is basically how is the field of valuation evolving with technology earlier you said that you are now involved in the tech part so because you know we wanted you to share your experience on that front uh, i thought it's it's great to uh, put it up uh, in front of you also with pleasure uh, uh, valuations like i said no is both procedural as well as judgment based right so with this ever evolving technological world certain processes of valuation can be automated and that's what we are trying to do so this whole artificial intelligence uh, phenomena that we are hearing these days like everywhere we are talking about artificial intelligence so like the company that i'm working with right now 73 strings we are also using artificial intelligence to automate a lot of these valuation processes right so it will give the valuator more time to do judgment based calls and spend less time in doing uh, procedural or mundane tasks required in the valuation activity so uh, it's 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 more like you know sourcing financial intelligence in a better and uh, easier way using technology so that you are able to analyze and leverage that data like quicker and more op- optic optically up op- cut it okay 
more I, i'll just repeat that sentence again so what we are doing is we are we are using financial inter- we are changing the way how financial intelligence is you know sourced analyzed and leveraged right and to talk in a more tech terms it's it's like using augmented intelligence solutions to perform the whole valuation and deal, deal sourcing process uh it's it's an amazing field because this is the future and if if you are a person who is interested in valuations you will be able to use all your intelligence of valuations and building programs that will help valuation processes uh, that will help make the valuation processes more smoother faster quicker easier everything so i personally feel that this is the future and if if you are considering getting into the valuations field getting into this is this is this is like a fintech right but very focused to valuations so you can probably open <clears throat> your vision towards this area as well fantastic i think i've totally enjoyed our conversation today shridhij and i'm so glad that i changed you for 3 months <laughs> to get on the call and you know help us Sorry. understand all of this so uh i'm feeling happy now <laughs> so also so working funny. in a complementary industry to valuation because i am in uh, financial due diligence right even for me it was like a value addition um and uh, i i'm again thankful to you for you know joining us today and helping us understand all of this no problem i just wanted to convey this one last thing that you know um when you choose a career or you know when you are planning to pursue certain financial uh, jobs like you know valuations etc uh, please open your horizon to you know considering other areas also so uh, it's it's not traditional anymore or rather it's not only traditional anymore. we are not saying that you know we are replacing the whole uh, consulting line but this is like a value addition and uh, one is, we are trying to help private equity players venture capitalists uh, you know hedge funds etc to automate a lot of their processes intelligently right so even if you are not from a tech background please do not refrain from entering into this tech space because as difficult as it sounds artificial intelligence is the future right and uh, you don't want to be left behind so please read like please i would just request the users to please read please expand their horizons and understand every field uh, and evaluate them and and reach out to me if you have any doubts because i was also little um, hesitant initially uh, because i didn't know if i could cope up in this tech field of valuations but i am loving it honestly so yeah that's just one last note that i wanted to make <laughs> great great uh thank you shitesh thank you so much for uh for all the information that you've given us today i'm i'm sure that the audience is uh, going to have a great value addition by seeing all of this um mm-hmm. yeah anything else shitesh no i mean uh, it's great that you guys are doing this uh, it's 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 a very good platform for people to get a one on one with uh, people like me who are in this industry uh, it, it was a pleasure for me also to share my journey or you know give my opinions because one doesn't get such platforms easily so it, it's it's a win win for both your viewers as well as for industry people like me who want to actually put their story forward so that you know somebody else even one person getting inspired by what i say is like an achievement for me right so you are kind of liaisoning between the two which is wonderful great great thanks for your support shitesh <laughs> uh yeah so uh, to the audience if you have any suggestions on the content or topics that you want us to cover in our future videos please do drop in in the comments um see commenter has planned a lot more interesting topics for the upcoming week so do stay tuned and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel follow us on linkedin instagram you know the drill basically so you know just just go and check out all the links in the description box and thank you from all of us at see commenter thanking shrithij again um and have a great day